What's up guys, welcome back to Investing PH. What a month, the PSEI dropped to more than 6%, taking us back to the 6100 level. This is the lowest our market has been since the start of the year. The big drop was said to be because of lower Philippine domestic trade and the fifth straight month of contraction in Chinese manufacturing activity. Others say it's because of the lack of a positive catalyst that added to the sell-off, and investors followed the movement of the MSCI rebalancing to end the month of August. If you search for more news about the happenings, countless stories tell us the day-to-day -day positive and negative news about why the stock market fell or climbed. But here's the thing, do you really need to react based on this? Does this change the value of the companies you are holding? Does it mean when the stock price of the stocks you hold plummets down, your decision to invest in these companies is wrong, or the company's business isn't good? Well, investors react too much to these kinds of news without even looking at what's really going on in the companies they hold. You know, most of the companies this quarter even reported higher earnings, but though it's like that, their stock price even went down. This is a sad reality of the stock market. Investors like to determine the value of a company based on the stock price alone. They don't care whether that company is doing good, has good financials, well handled debt, and is trading at a fair price. No, they determine a good investment based on what the price is doing. If it's going up, it's a great company, and when the stock goes down, it's junk. But for me, I don't look at companies like that, I look at how it's doing financially. The only time I care about what a price is doing is when it goes below my buy price, because that's the time I'll be buying again. I see comments asking, why am I still holding onto stocks even though the market hasn't moved for that long? My returns are low even though I've invested for a couple of years now. The stock market is a scam. Well, because most Filipinos investors want immediate gains, but I see it differently. I look at what's happening right now as an opportunity because I am a long-term investor and I'm willing to hold my stocks for 10 years or more to gain more and more dividends. I'm happy that the market is giving me time to buy stocks at discount prices. You know when I started investing, it was before the pandemic, before the market crash. I was having a hard time looking for companies that pay me considerable amount of dividends. So when the market crashed, I was so happy to buy stocks because everything was on sale. And these aren't just some random stocks. These are great companies that before the pandemic weren't even considered a good dividend stock because their price was so high that their dividend yield isn't worth looking at. I was praying back then that I hope I can invest at least 1 million pesos while the market is still cheap because when I look at it from a long-term perspective, this would give me a greater advantage rather than investing when the market is already high. But right now, I got more than what I expected. Not only have I invested more than a million while well, the market is down, but it is still cheap right now. This way I can invest more and more money with a higher dividend yield. That's why when I look at my portfolio, you can see the massive growth of my dividends. From the first year of only 161.55 pesos, jumping to 43,000 in 2021 to 81,259, and this year, I've already received 71,000 and there's still more to come. Back then, my target was only a yield of 3%, but since the market allowed me to invest more money while it was down, my estimated dividend yield right now is 6.65%, meaning I can get 149,000 in the next 12 months or 134,349 after taxes because we pay 10% of tax for dividends. This is 11,195 pesos a month, which is double my expectation. My goal back then was 10,000 a month before I reached 30 years old, but because of the opportunity given, I will be able to get that maybe even this year, two years ahead of time. That's why it's so important if you're an investor to have a long-term mindset because history has already proven to us that the stock market often trades sideways and it has already happened two times in the PSE market, 1970 to 1991, the longest was 1993 to 2010. This means if you invested in 1993 and just left your money there, you would just break even in 2010 and it's also happening right now. If you invested in 2013, then your money would have just broken even. But it doesn't mean it would be the story for most investors in these times when the market has traded sideways there are a lot of opportunities. Just as a case with my portfolio, even though the market is down negative 24.34% from its point when I started investing, I'm still up 10.27% and for the past months, I'm always at the positive side. This is because I kept on buying the companies that I had when they went on sale and I reinvested every dividend I got which actually is the sole reason why I stayed positive. 
I've received more than 200,000 worth of dividends and I reinvested everything. This lets those dividends gain more dividends for me. Right now, my latest 12 months annual dividend income is 110,150. This is from September 2022 to August 2023. Imagine while I'm waiting for stocks to go up, I'm earning this amount and this is already after taxes. This is why I'm never shaken by the thought of our market trading sideways for a long time because I don't have the intention of selling in the next 5 or 10 years. I know that the companies I hold are strong and will continue to grow in the years to come. And imagine, the whole market is still down, so why would I stress myself about having such low returns when the main index is nowhere near its price when I start investing? This is also the reason why tracking your portfolio is a must for long-term investors. You can compare your performance to the index, and one way to do that easily is by using simply Wall Street. Not only does it help you track your portfolio, but in just one platform, you can easily filter out stocks to invest in. They give you countless of data from past performance, valuation, comparisons, dividends, health, and a lot more. They also give you updates on the stocks in your watch list from earnings release, dividends, insider buying or selling, and when the stock is trading at a discount. Speaking of that, if you don't know how to compute the intrinsic value, they have it for you, and they let you choose two options from analysts or discounted cash flow. So an all-in-one platform for both beginner and long-time investors. So if you want to try it out, they offer their basic plan forever free. And if you do want to avail of their paid plan, then by using my link, you can get up to 40% discount. So what are you waiting for? Try Simply Wall Street. With that, let's get back to the video. Now for the stocks I bought this month, Security Bank, and with the market dropping, I added more to ZNL and Metro Bank. It has been quite a long time since I've added more shares to Metro Bank. Because as it is right now, I see the company still trading at a discount and its dividend yield is more than 5%, which is a good deal for me. So with that, these are all the stocks I own. Globe is still the largest, followed by LTG, Megaworld, and now DNL. I would also like to talk about my shares in MPI. I've accepted the tender offer because it's a big win for me. The average price that I bought MPI is 3.72, which is a 39.78% return before taxes. And in the time I was holding MPI for more than 3 years, I got dividends every year, and I'll be getting another round this September, which means I got more than 45% return with dividends. As to what I'll do with the money, I'll reinvest it back to the stocks in my portfolio and I would get a better deal as I would invest in a stock with a higher dividend yield than MPI. This would further increase the dividend yield of my portfolio, giving me more passive income a year. This is compounding at its best. Grouping my stocks by sector, holding companies 23%, Real estate 15%, banks 15%, REITs 12%, tech 11%, energy 7%, industrial which is solely DNL 7%, my index fund 4%, and services which is retail 6%. So that's about it for this monthly update. So remember, don't concentrate too much on the day-to-day -day news that analysts bombard you, but what you should focus on is what's happening to the companies you hold, because at the end of the day, that's what matters and by knowing well the companies you hold would prevent you from making irrational decisions like panic selling or buying. You have the confidence that even though its stock price is going down, this company is doing well. You will have the confidence to buy more of it, investing would be stress-free and can easily be maintained for a long time. You will have that long-term mindset. So take out the noise and concentrate on what really matters. So if you find this video helpful and still haven't clicked the like button, be sure to do so before leaving. Thank you and see you in the next video.